Hi, I'm Liza from Derriman, and today we have artist Linda McCauley visiting us at the factory. Um, and it's wonderful to meet her because we've just been on the phone to each other. But she's going to show us how to make a palette that never dries out. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> if we ever get over laughing. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to share with you my palette system that I use. And it's fantastic because the paint doesn't dry out, it'll last for months, and it makes your paint really easily transportable to other locations. So what I do is I buy a shallow flat container like this one here from the $2 shop. You can see it's about two inches thick and it's got a lid on it. These were exactly $2. <laughs> We can see it. So you can see yeah. it. Excellent. Excellent. And I line it with an old towel. So a nappy, any sort of absorbent material. So we're going to fit it so it fits, cut it so it fits exactly into the base of this container. Yeah, you don't you don't want it so it's sticking up over the edges. You want a pretty good fit in the middle there. And then what I'm going to do is take the bucket of water and you need to wet this. So pop it in a bucket of water, squeeze it out fairly well and then fit it to the bottom of your container. So not soaking wet but fairly wet. Okay. And I use baking paper. It has to be a fairly good quality baking paper. What we're actually doing here is forming a membrane between the wet towel and the bottom. That's, I would say, semi-porous, not completely porous. So you want to make sure that it connects fairly well to the wet towel there. Mm -hmm. And then all we do is we just squeeze our paints out onto that. So putting some magenta, one of my favourite colours. A little bit of yellow. So I make four palettes up like this. So I tend to keep them two primary colour palettes, so a red, a red palette and a yellow together, a blue palette, a darks palette and a lights palette. And the reason I do that is if, when you're transporting them, the paints so then sometimes run together, you'll end up with at least a red colour rather than a murky brown. If you put so you can see here that the water hasn't it hasn't quite stuck to the baking paper, it's a little bit dry, so I'm just going to pour a little bit of extra water in there. That's a lot of extra water. Can you see now that it's actually sticking? Ah, uh, yeah, it's sort of sucking it up, it's isn't it? It's sucking it, it up, it's a lot wetter. So what you want to do is create a damp surface underneath that's going to keep this paint cool and stop it from evaporating quickly. Okay, so I make up those palettes, but I don't actually paint out of these palettes. Oh, okay. So, so what, how do you paint? Like, <laughs> without... <laughs> so these are basically for storing your paint oh, and okay. helping you transport your paint if you want to go and paint on location or if you go into a workshop, you can just pop the lid on. Or going to art class. <coughs> when going to, to art, art classes, class. they're absolutely perfect. So then you don't have to take all your paints. All you're taking is a little... Yeah, yeah, I'll show you at the end of the video yeah. what I don't take. I don't actually take all my paints. Um, yeah, and it's also, it just saves you getting out paints all throughout the day if you're painting in a workshop. And it's also a lot more convenient if you want to just pop in and just paint for a little bit, you know, instead of having to lay out. You don't have color. to commit. You don't have to commit. <laughs> if you've got five minutes, you can just turn up, take yeah. the lid off and start painting. And you're ready to go. So these are the containers that I would use for storage. I'm using this meat tray, or you could use another one of these shallow containers. I do the same thing. I line it with a bit of towel there, put it into the water, and pop it on there, spread it out. And again, another sheet of baking paper. Just sort of press it down so it's connecting. And when I go to mix the colour, I take a bit out of my blue palette and a bit out of my red palette. So these are some of my favourite colour combinations. I love magenta there. And then we're going to use a little bit of cobalt blue. And I'll mix those two together. So you always mix from the outside into the middle. 
You see that where they meet in the middle, you get that really nice transition of colour. And then these would be the colours that you would be using for your painting. You can pick it up there. At the end of the day when you finish painting, these colours get all dirty when you mix them up. So the ones on your palette are the pure colours and these, are the, these become a little bit muddy. So you don't want to mix in here and create a bit of a mess. Yeah, yeah. Because well, you, you don't, don't want to contaminate them. You don't want to contaminate yeah. them. This is great. This is such a great way to work because, like, at the end of your day's painting with your palette, you don't go and wash your palette. You can just pick that up, fold it up, and then just put it straight in the bin. Exactly, mm. yeah. Mm. So what I do is if I've got any clean leftover paint, I can pop it back into these palettes for use later. Or if I'm finished with this... Or if you've mixed a colour and you want to use it again tomorrow so you don't have to remix it, you could put that idea. in there. That's exactly yeah, yeah. what I do, put it in there. Mm. So when, once this gets dirty, you just screw that up, put it in the bin, and replace it with a new sheet. There we go, ready to start again. So I just wanted to demonstrate one of my favourite products, which is drying retarder. So drying retarder is quite an oily substance. Oh, so there you go. I'll just let you have a feel of it there. Oh, wow, feel? it feel, really does feel like baby oil, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. So with drying retarder, the recommendation is that you don't use more than 10% drying retarder to paint ratio because what happens is it prevents the paint from curing properly. Mm. So drying retarder is a great product because it slows down the speed at which the paint dries but you can't use too much. So you have to be aware of the ratio. You do need to be careful. Mm. Yes. So the way that I use the drying retarder is I use it in a little spray bottle. So what I do is I mix up a 50-50 ish. ish. <laughs> There's no precise stuff here. <laughs> so I'm going to pour drying retarder into this little spray bottle. It's about 50-50. Yeah. And then I'm going to fill up the rest of the bottle with just plain water. And then during the days I'm working, I can mist, if, as these paints start to skin over the top or before, preferably yeah, before, yeah. I can just mist over the top of those with some drying retarder. And the oily nature of the drying retarder actually prevents the moisture evaporating out from the paint. Ah, oh, okay. And prevents it from curing. So, and that would be a great way to work if you were outdoors and it was really hot. Like you've had experience of working plain air in really hot, yeah, deserty environments yeah. as seen in your paintings. Mm. Yeah. So I do a lot of plain air work and I take this palette system out with me outdoors. So I'll just show you quickly what I do. Yeah. I'm so here's my beautiful kit. Oh, wow. <laughs> is that it? So that if you were going out to paint for the day, this is what you would take? Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what I take with my brushes. Usually fits in there. Yeah. In the side, I take some drying retarder premix with some water, and I also have some acrylic paint mixed with water because I love that as well. Yeah. Okay, and I have my four different palettes, so I'll just unpack those, or I take this to a class. Oh, if you were demo, if you're doing, yeah, a, demo, doing a demo, demo. Yeah. So I very rarely take tubes of paint. I might take you know one or two colours that I use a lot of. Back. So these are my well used filthy palettes, <laughs> as yeah, you yeah. can see. So this one here is one that I've made up with my reds and yellows and my favourite colours. And you can see this this is actually this um, palette is, I've had for probably over a month already. And you can see that this paint is still really wet. So when we open the lid, it's a little bit dry underneath so it can pop a little bit. So you need to do a little bit, of, so you're saying that's a month old? Yeah, this is a month old and I've used it painting plain air. Yeah, it yeah. It hasn't dried out at all. You can see some of the colours here are just starting to get a little bit dry. It's a bit of drying retarder, so I would open this palette up, give it a little spritz over the top of the drying retarder. Now this is a 50-50 mix and 
like we were saying previously, mm. we used dry and retired 10% ratio, but because we're just providing a little oily film over the top of these to prevent them drying out. It's not more than the 10% that's not, recommended. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and the moisture underneath the baking paper prevents it drying out. So that's my reds palette. So this, this palette here you can see is an older one that's dried out completely. And this is my blues palette. You can see, you can see I've got my variety of blues in there. So this is quite old. So at this stage, and you can see it's getting a little bit crusty, mm. I can just throw that top bit out. Then I put the baking paper over the top and to size. That, it's always good to put your baking paper overlap a little bit so it doesn't spill like that blue has onto the other side. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then I'll pop out some of the blues. So I always try and keep my light colours together and my dark colours. So that's Australian Sky Blue, one of my favourites. Australian Blue Gum, that's a delicious mm -hmm. colour. And then I pop my dark blues up here on the other side. Blue. So a bit of palette management, palette colour management. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I keep these palettes separate is if you're transporting them to a class and you know you, they're in the car and they're on an angle, it doesn't matter if the blues run together. It oh, okay, yeah, yeah. If the yellow and orange palette runs together, but yellow and blue running together makes a milky green, so mm. I try and keep them separate. Oh. A lights palette, so I've got a bit of white, grey, maple, yellow, slight, and a bit of unbleached titanium. Well used, because I've just come back from painting on location. Very hot and windy. And a darks palette, and this is a fresh palette of the different darks that I might use. So, so you can see that by using this kind of system, you very rarely waste paint. And it's easy to just turn up to a class or pop in, you know, if you want to just pop into the studio or your kitchen table, which is what I had for years, and do yeah, a yeah. little bit on your painting. You don't have to lay out a whole setup, you're just ready to go. And that's it. Yeah, I just think it's brilliant. I just I love the fact that you're um, you're not putting the paint down the sink. I love the way that you can like I love that it's you're managing your colours by putting them in separate containers. Um, you're ready to paint at any time. You don't have to ta you don't have to transport as much, and you don't have to commit as well. Because you know when you put up paint on a palette and you are like I I hate wasting anything. Oh yes. It's so great like there's <laughs> like and so it's awful like when you put paint on the palette and then you go oh, I'm really gonna have to throw that out. But no, not nothing gets wasted. Yeah, nothing gets wasted. Oh, I just think it's brilliant. Mm. That's unreal. And I think this is one of the best things that I teach. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Some people love it. No, I just very clever. Thank oh. you so much. Oh, thank you for inviting me. It's oh, been it's a pleasure. The tour of the factory. I want to. <laughs> I'm going to go and make myself one of those. I want to be ready to paint at any time, like that. <laughs> you need a lot more time, definitely. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks for watching. And thank you. See you later. See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>